Good morning. How are you today? Welcome to Coffee and a Card. Waiting for some people to hop on to a cup of coffee with me. And I'm going to change the glasses so I can see better. I have nice special ones for closer up work. Oh, that's better. Well, happy Passover to those who are celebrating and Easter coming up. Welcome to everybody. I celebrate Easter, so we're getting, don't have to do a whole lot. I'm going to be with some other family members and I'll bring my salad and wine to contribute to the dinner. And Jessica made it. Hey, <laughs> congratulations. Great, Jessica. Glad you made it on. Head off today, huh? <laughs> Very good. Very good. So just like I remind everybody, sign on, say hello, and um, then you get entered into my raffle. I will reveal the winner of last week's raffle. I didn't spin the wheel, but I do have a winner. So um, <clears throat> I will reveal that when more people are on. Okay. <laughs> okay. And Marsh is on too. Oh, Good. Hi, Julie. Um, yeah, but my downlines are, are on. I, I know they were excited about doing some pre-ordering. The new catalog, as many of you know, begins May 2nd. So you have until May 1st to order from the old catalog and from the mini catalog. That also ends May 1st. So um, it's there's been a lot of sales going on. Some of you took advantage of the last chance items that were on sale. Yep. Yeah. Give me thumbs up or hearts if you got to order and got some great deals, right? Uh, there's some things, unfortunately, some things got sold out because there are only a supplies last. So that is something you have to remember, but up to 60%, some things, you know, really got up to 60%. Um, I know some of you disappointed about the Stamparatus and some people had questions about that. They uh, stamp it up with discontinuing it right now because there were some legal issues with it, probably due to the design because it's similar to another product. So um, rather than, you know, they decide to just discontinue it for now while they kind of sort out those issues. So hopefully something like it will come back again and, um, and we'll, because it's a great tool. <laughs> so those of you who have it, be lucky, you know, consider yourself lucky. Um, all right, yeah, so your order Lois is on its way. All right, all right. I actually had um, three orders. I had a workshop order. Uh, that's coming next Thursday. I had, I ordered some things at discount as well, um, stocking up on some paper that I want to keep up with. And um, my daughter has some things she wants to order. And then I have my pre-order. So uh, Tuesday, pre-order comes. So I will share with you a lot of those things. I'll do an unboxing kind of a thing that um, people like to see. Just I'll show you the products, show you what's there, the papers, the um the stamps, the punches, the dies, all that stuff. I'll explain what I got, and then we will, um, I'll start playing with the stuff and then start sharing some projects with you with that, okay? So, um, oh, Julie, you got yours yesterday. Oh, good. Oh, excellent. Yay. <laughs> Hi, Betty. Thanks for joining in today again. All righty. Um, yeah, so people sign on, say hello, and you get entered into the raffle. Okay, so I'm hoping maybe today, but today, could, you know, being Good Friday, it could go either way. I thought maybe some people will be off of work, so maybe we'd get more people on today. Or maybe people are busy with their Easter preparations, and maybe it wouldn't be a good day for some. But either way, here we are. Enjoy your coffee. I got mine today. Um, had the grandkids overnight. That was fun. And so they're downstairs playing with Grandpa right now. So <laughs> had a nice pancake breakfast, and it's all good. What could be better? <laughs> okay. Yep. Also a special day. It's my husband and my 39th wedding anniversary. And so we'll, we'll celebrate that later with a nice dinner. And um, yeah, almost four decades. Amazing, right? Yeah. Oh, boy, so all good stuff. We're very blessed. And I hope you are too. 
Hey, count your blessings. I know life gives us lemons sometimes, but we have to think of the positive things, right? Yeah. All right. So hope you are having good plans for the Easter. I have a special um, front fold today. We're going to see how it goes. Um, I made a couple of them ahead of time, of course. And oh, thank you, Jackie. Um, and I always angst over, okay, what am I going to show you know, my stampers today? You know, whether it's my closest friends or, or just, you know, people I, I'm just meeting or whatever. I just, um, I, I'm always like, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? I, I think too hard on it. And then I can't decide until the very last minute. So sometimes I'm up late and it's like, okay, Lorraine, you got to do it. You just got to decide. <laughs> so I work best under pressure. So I was kind of like this with the card that I was doing. I kind of have an idea of what I wanted to use. Didn't totally put one together for what I'm showing you today. I'm going to use the Speedy Recovery set. This one is retiring, um, but I haven't even used it yet. So this is its, its maiden voyage, you might say. Um, I do have some friends that um, are going, that a friend that's going to need some surgery soon. So I figured, okay, let me make a card and um, have that ready to go for her. So cheers. Good morning. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, so the card we are going to make today is called the Peekaboo card. Now, I made a card a little while ago, a few weeks ago, with my, um, I call my, so my core group, my New York stampers. Those are the people that I, I started stamping with 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago. Even before I became a demonstrator, we were doing a little stamping together. And so anyway, every Monday morning I do a uh, a meeting with them and we did a card that I'm going to show you another time that looks like things are sort of bursting through a little window and so I said I don't know what this is called we need a name for it and somebody said oh pick a blue card I said oh that's good I like that well I looked it up and there's a different technique that's called the peekaboo card so that's what we're going to do today we're going to do the common peekaboo card not the other one that I kind of made up so um so this is what it does it's um, I made two and I'm going to make one or two with you today also. So you have, I know this is probably backwards, but I'll turn the camera around and then we'll, I'll show you down below. So we have a car that looks like any other, it has a little circle punch in the window here. And then when you open it, something's going to go peekaboo and show right through. Isn't that cool? So it's going to slide right out with that other message or another image. It can be up to you. So even in doing this, I said, all right, now how am I going to write this up for you? How do I tell you what to bring? Uh, this obviously has DSP in the back. And then when I open it, my sentiment comes out with some stamps. And um, But it can go any way. You can have your sentiment here. And I'm going to show you one of those today. So that's what I'm saying. Actually, I want to show you different ideas. So And then you can have anything coming in through here. So let me just show you kind of the, the top. It's going to kind of slide over like that. Okay. Yeah. It's, I know it's backwards, Tina, but when I turn to flip the camera down, it won't be backwards, but you can see the mechanism, right? Okay. So I'll show you that in a little bit. And then I made a little bunny one at, and after my bunny one was, was first and it was okay. I wasn't happy with the GSP I started because I just was kind of making a sample. A lot of times, the first time we do it, we make a sample and then we keep that so that we can copy that and, and play with it and make sure we know how it goes together. But anyway, it, it came out cute and I worked with it and we're going to, that one will, <clears throat> excuse me, be for my granddaughter for Easter. <laughs> okay, my little um, thing that I was picky about, she's not going to matter. She's not going to notice. So anyway, all right, I'm going to turn the camera around. Now I did put, if you're on my mailing list, you received a message late last night. I know it was late as far as getting some things ready. If you were going to craft along with me today, I don't know how many of you actually do craft along with me or you just wait for the replay. Either way, people on my mailing list, you have that list of materials. One thing I didn't add was tear and tape. Okay, you do need a strong adhesive on there. So I will send that out again, and I'll also put it in the description below the video here today. Okay, so 
like I said, because I wasn't sure which way I was going with it. I got that out to you late, but there's always a replay, right? Let's go back and, and check that out. All right. So let me um, flip my camera around. Bear with me. You know, this is a tricky process for me yet. And there we go. Hold on to your hooks. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Not too bad, right? Okay. A little bit of a shadow there. All right. So, perfect. All right. So, I'm going to make two different ones because I'm going to show you how to deal with getting that peekaboo thing going if you have a dark background. All right. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit. So I'm going to do a sample that's just all white first, and then we can um, try one with, with the color. I'm going to use a rich razzleberry, one of the retiring colors. Some people are sad to see that go. It is a, an unusual color, a you know, purplish pink. Um, oh, it's purple, but okay, more on the reddish purple side than the bluish purple side. Okay, now let's. Um, I found it's helpful to label the different pieces because there are three pieces to this card. It isn't just folded and then you put your layers on because you need that mechanism. So I'm going to put aside. The raspberry. Okay, these are the fronts, and then these are the backs. Those go together, and then I'm going to have a white on the inside, so we can we can write with that. I'll pull this up a little bit. Whoops! There we go. Okay, so the pieces you need for the front of the card, you need four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. It's going to be scored at five and a half. And then we'll score it at five and a half. It's actually going to go this way when we put it all together, so that's why I have it like that. The back of the card, four and a quarter by five and three quarters. We're scoring at five and a half. So that's going to obviously leave you with just that quarter inch flap on the side. There, there we go. Five and three quarters. We're going to score five and a half. So that's that difference there. And then for the inside of the card, we have four and a quarter. Notice they're all four and a quarter by eight and a half. And then we're going to score that at four and a quarter. So it's going to end up just being like a four and a quarter square. Oops, there we go. Sorry about that. Four and a quarter square. Oh, why do you, are you seeing a shadow down here, or is that just me? Let me know. Let's see if I can fix that. I'm going to try to put my light down a little bit. Need that color. Oh, I haven't seen that before. Anyway, okay. That, that could be a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to take my um, bone folder and crease those. Okay, ignore my mess here. <laughs> oh, maybe you can't see it so much. All right, that's okay. My used wood paper. I use it till it's completely, completely all covered up. I just try to put a clean one out for you guys when I start. All right, the back and then the front. I'm going to fold that and score burnish the score lines. Okay, so now let's see. There we go there. All right, so now sometimes, like I said, you can use colored cardstock on here. And sometimes it's easier to keep the pieces straight if you're seeing maybe the front and the back are colors and then the inside is a different color, uh, is white or different color, so that a little easier to keep track of it all. But I'm going to show you these anyway. All right, so you need a two-inch circle punch. And at some point, 
especially if you're using color, a bigger circle punch will come in handy later on too. But if you're just doing white, you can just use the two inch circle punch. So what we're going to do is on the part that's the inside, we are going to punch a circle right around here. So we want to keep it to the right and kind of close to the top. So I'm going to come down with my punch up here. Good morning, Nadine. Happy Easter. I'm glad you got on. Okay, and I'm actually going to, I don't, it doesn't be way at the top. I'm just going to put it all the way into my card. I'll put the card all the way into the punch, rather, and then I'm going to punch that. Okay, we can save that for something else another time. All right, and there's our there's our hole. Now we're going to take a pencil. Oh, I'm off camera. I'm so sorry. Oh, what's happening here is I'm slipping. That's the problem. All right, there we go. That should be better. All right, sorry about that, guys. All right, so I'm going to take a pencil very lightly. Make sure you have a nice white eraser, although this isn't going to show too much, but still just lightly trace that circle. And then we're going to punch the same circle on the back. Okay, don't punch through two layers of cardstock with your punches. Sometimes the dies work, but not the punches that way. So now I'm just going to slide it in and then punch out that same circle in the same exact spot. Okay, so we have that there. And then we have to do one more on the front of the card. So we want one right over here in the same position. So just putting that there so we know which is which. So we're going to line these up. I'm going to do it on the inside just in case there's some... leftover pencil marks, whatever. And so either way, you want that circle to be in the same position. And we're going to punch that. Okay. So then, what's going to happen? This is the inside. It's all going to line up like this once we get it all together. Just like that. And then this is actually, this flap in, is going to wrap around the back, and that's what's actually going to slide through and, and show um, the other piece on the other side. Okay, now, this is the back. And we need to put tear and tape on this little flap here. You need really strong adhesive. Um, the tear and tape works perfectly. I'm going to get my silicone mat here. And I'm going to put the tear and tape right on that, on that flap here. When you have a card with moving parts, Make sure you use very strong adhesive. I don't want time for the glue to dry. The tone tape works wonderfully. Okay. So, now the, um, that flap It's going to actually go this way, all right? The sticky is right here. And that's going to go, I just make sure I have it right here. Yep. Um, okay, this part here, that this edge is going to go on there. Let me just double check. I haven't done this a whole lot. I just want to make sure I have it right. Okay, so this is going to go right on there. For some reason, this is not feeling right to me. Yeah, it should be right. All right forgive me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, 
that looks like. Oh, okay. Well, before we do that, this is why it's not looking right. That's, that is the right thing to do. But before we do that, we are going to glue these together. That's why I'm thinking something didn't feel right. So put that aside for a second. We're going to put glue on this, and we're going to cover that up there. So you can use whatever your favorite adhesive is on this part. Hi, Betsy from Texas. Good morning. Oh, I guess I need a new glue. Okay, the joys of starting a new glue. Don't have to shake, shake, shake so much. Here we go. Okay, make sure you get a little bit around that circle too. You want it to all hold together. And we're going to line those up. And here's where I do prefer the glue because, see, like here, I can wiggle it so that it's all lined up and straight. You have that little bit of time to do that. All right, so you see what I did here? My mouth keeps slipping. Okay, so we have the inside glued to the front. Then we are now going to put this onto there. So the, the back of that inside part is going to be attached to that little flap there. And I like to kind of open it up a little bit so that I can see that going right on there. Whoa. Make sure you have it nice and straight because this will, obviously it's good adhesive, it will stick right away. All right, so we have that little flap attached there. So there's our, our back piece. Now this little flap is going to fold on the inside, and then this is gonna come around the back. So from the top, here's what we have. This is our inside piece, the four and a quarter piece that was folded square-like, okay, eight and a half by four and a quarter. This is our front, I'm gonna wrap around to the back of that. And then here's our back with the one with a little flap on it. So that when you open it, that's going to slide across and show the new picture there. So we're going to have something on the back of this. And when we open it, we'll have another image or saying on the piece that slides in. Now I want to show you this before I actually did any stamping or anything on there. If you were to do some direct stamping, then you might want to do that before you actually glue it all together. In which case you would again, draw a little circle through there which I will do right now. I'm just going to open up so it's more on the inside. Very light, so that I know when I stamp something, it's going to be in the proper place. And I am going to um, start with a sentiment. So I'm going to have wishing you a speedy recovery. And then when we open it up, the flowers are going to slide over. All right, so when we do that on the one with the colors. All right, so... Um, for now, I will just show you with this. Uh, oops, I want the thing. I just said that, didn't I? <laughs> okay, hello, Joanne. Welcome. Okay, if anybody's new on here this morning, make sure you say a hello, leave a comment, and you get entered into my raffle for joining the live. Okay, if you're watching the replay, feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to hear feedback, but then um, unfortunately you won't be entered into the raffle, but I do appreciate hearing where you're from and who's on. All right, so feel free with that. All right, so like I said, just to be safe, I would have stamped this before I glued it together, just in case I made a mistake. But you know, it's not the end of the world because there's a way to fix if I did make a mistake. Okay, a little heavy on the right-hand side. 
because I'm right-handed, I lean on that side a little bit more, but that's okay. It's my sample, and if I want, I can fix that up later. All right, so now I'm going to erase that. That's where these retractable pens, you know, the big pens are good. They have a nice white, clean eraser so that I can erase that. And most of it's not going to be seen anyway. All right, see how nice that goes? And make sure it's clean. If it's dirty from other pencil erasers, just rub it on clean paper and rub that part off, and you'll be left with a nice clean eraser again. All right, so here we go. So there's the saying that I have in there. So for some reason, this isn't laying totally flat, so I'm just going to recrease that. All right, there we go. And then when I open it, oops, that's why it wasn't laying flat, because this piece has to be on the inside. And when I open it, we're going to have something else there. Okay, so again, if you're just stamping on the white, you can do the same process. You can draw your circles. You don't even have to do it all the way around. Just leave some little marks so you know where, where that would be. And then you can stamp something there. So just for now, I am going to just stamp the flowers and but I'll show you other options. But this is just so you get the concept of how to build the card. Okay, certainly you can just all do it this way. And then we'll erase those little lines. I did smudge a little there. So, okay. And of course, on my real card, I'm going to um, color that in. Okay. Here we go. So, there's our back with the sediment on it. There's the front. And when you slide it over, the flowers are going to come. So that's what's going to be on the front. You can decorate the front of your card any way you like. You can use um, DSP like I did here. I just cut a piece that was <clears throat> four by five and a quarter. And then um, I lined up the circle and I punched that. I did it separately you know, because the punch might not go all the way through. might not get as clean cut. So I just layered it on. And I drew the circle like I did for the other pieces, and I just punched it in the same spot. Or you can, here's my bunny card. You can um, just decorate the front however you like. And in the back here, I wanted some DSP. I would have chosen a different DSP um, if I knew what I was doing with the front, but I chose, you know, these colors for the, and the bunny and whatever. I would have chosen something that matched this better. But anyway, it's so cute. We're going to put a little, um, I could put another little sentiment on there if we want. And then open it up and look, the little bunny pops through and saying hi. Isn't that cute? And then what I chose to do, now this is not my granddaughter's name, but um, I chose the Alphabest set, which I believe is not retiring. Uh, here's the Easter Bunny set. That's staying alphabest and the punches that go along with those. Okay, whoop, the glare. There we go. And the punch for the little shapes here. And you can stamp the letter in there like I did here. And I took this little uh, polka dot pattern and I punched it in, I uh, stamped it inside and then I punched it out with the little best label. I love this little thing. It's so cute. You can make a little banner with it if you want. Put some twine behind it to look really adorable. All right, so I figured it would be cute to put her name on there. And at first I was thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to put it straight across in a line. But then when I just kind of put it down to see if I liked it, it was kind of all random. I said, oh, you know what? I like that better. So you never know how, how things will come up. You know, kind of like just blocks sitting on there. Kind of cute, right? So I think she will like that. She's downstairs, so she won't be hearing me. 
That's okay. So here we go. We open it up and then there's the bunny popping out to say hi. <laughs> Isn't it cute? Oh good, El Marie got on. She's not working today. She's my neighbor. Said she was gonna try to get on. Good morning. Oh hi Denise, another local gal. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this with the colored. Now, obviously, you wouldn't be able to stamp on the back if it's in color, right? Especially the rich razzleberry is too dark. So this is where a bigger circle punch will come in handy. Two and a half. Now, this is an old one. We don't have a two and a half inch circle punch right now. The two inch punch did come, um, did come back. You can get it on the online exclusives. It is not in the... Um, current catalog, but you can get the two inch circle punch with, um, well, not with, but you can also get a one and a half inch circle punch. I love having the circle punches for this reason. You can just punch out real quick. I don't have to take out my dies in my die cut machine just to get a circle. Um, so I, I still use all mine. So I'm happy along with so many other demonstrators and customers that the circle punches are back in the new catalog. There is a two and three eighths, which is obviously just one eighth different from my two and a half. So that one is coming in my order on Tuesday. I don't think I have that size. If I do, it's a very old one. Um, and the two and three eighths punch is actually bundled with a stamp set that has circles um, circle images that will fit right into that punch, which is really kind of fun. Some are sentiments that are arched in, in the same, um, measurements as the circle. <clears throat> Some are images that are just, that, that will fit that circle that are in a circle shape. Like there's one with the, with a sun and some waves that are like the sun is on the top half, waves on the bottom half. Really cute. So I can't wait to play with that. Maybe like a, a cupcake, I think. There's some birthday things. So a variety of stuff that will bundle with the punch. Or you can just get them separately as well. All right, so that's something to look forward to. A little hint of what's coming. And um, so, like I said, this is where you will need a little bit bigger punch because we're going to actually put... Um, that bigger circle punch in the back here so that it will show through. Oh, one other thing that that's fun to do and well, not fun to do. It's, it's helpful to do is what I meant to say is to put another piece of tear and tape here so that it holds together a little bit better. Um, I'm not going to do it yet because I think I might want to fix this up a little bit. Um, but if you put the tear and tape there, it's not going to just all fall apart. You know, like someone will say, wait, how do you open this? You know, you don't want to just cut it all coming apart. So it's going to be just enough to hold this down and not totally fall open. All right. As you can see, did the same thing on this one. See, it doesn't totally pull apart because the tear and tape is holding it, holding that part back there flat. Okay. <laughs> I love how the little guy comes out there. Again, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to just stamp him straight up. But then I said, oh, wait, the motion is this way, as if he's coming in sideways, peeking in through the door, right? <laughs> I thought this cute, or the window. Okay, so let me do one in the Razzleberry and with the Speedy Recovery stamp set for my friend. So here we go. So I'm going to have Razzleberry on the front and the back. And then my inside piece is going to be white. So this is the one that, here's the front. Four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So I just hold my card stock sideways and you can get... A lot of your sheets out that way. So obviously, full sheet of cardstock, that's eight and a half, right? So cut your four and a quarter, and then just cut off that little edge, take the quarter inch. And then you can get another four and a quarter out for your next piece. So this will just take one piece of cardstock, and then you have some left over for something else. So this one, again, is the four and a quarter by five and three quarters. I don't know where that sticky note went to, but 
trust me, four and a quarter by five and three quarters. We're scoring at five and a half. Okay, so I'm going to put my tear and tape on there right away. What happens? I throw things around, especially when I get talking. Like, where did that go? Usually right in front of you, right? <laughs> Okay, so if you don't have this product, this tear tape, I highly suggest it. Okay, Ooh, always good to have your silicone mat underneath because if you go off the paper a little bit, it's going to not stick to your silicone mat, but that mat is also going to protect your workspace, not get it sticky for when you continue with your project. All right, so I'll just leave that on there for now. Our inside, I'll score that. Oh, it is scored. <laughs> four and a quarter by eight and a half, scored in half at four and a quarter. So you have a four and a quarter square when you're all done. All right, remember this is where we're going to punch our circle with this two inch punch coming from the top. And I just lined it up with the edge of the punch there. Toss that aside. Trace your little circle there. Punch that again. It took me a little while to kind of get this card. I don't know, maybe it's just me, I was tired. <laughs> like, wait, what am I doing? It does take a little while to kind of get the logistics of it. But here's my suggestion. When you have something like that, do it three times in a row. <laughs> then... You kind of get it in your brain. Kind of like remembering names. Like sometimes if I'm at a party, I'm meeting a lot of people. And if I don't say the person's name often, three times in a row, or, or just keep saying it, then I forget. It could be five minutes later in the same conversation. Wait, what was that person's name again? It's crazy. Maybe it just happens when you're older. Who knows? Okay, here's our front. And we need a circle in there too. Right? So let's square that. Front, inside, and the back is around here someplace. Yeah, I'll turn up. Okay, so like I said, one circle there. I'm going to just do it from behind, just so I don't have any pencil left over pencil marks. It'll be on the inside. Because remember, that's how it's going to go. Right? The inside is going to go here. We want that circle to show through as well. Ooh, almost grabbed the bigger punch. Two inch. It's hard for you to see that. It's almost harder for me to see it. All right. So, and that's going to line up like that. Right? And then that's where, this is where we want to connect the back of that to the inside of the card. And first I will glue this on. Go over my mat. So add tear tape, tear and tape to that list of supplies that you need. I like to keep a lot of the projects fairly generic so that you don't have to have a particular stamp set. You know, unless I'm showcasing a particular product, you know, showing you, you know, what I love about a particular product or stamp set. Um, I like to have a project such as this so that you can use any stamps or punches that you have. Now, because this is a little... The raspberry is a little dark. I'm seeing a little edge hanging here. I'm just going to take a real tiny sliver off of that. Don't want it showing through. Is that going to be doable? Yeah, it will. Flip it this way. Okay, just want a hair off of that. It won't be noticed because that's the inside. It's going to be totally concealed. All right. 
And then if, when you're doing this, I see there's a tiny bit down here. I might fix that later too. But if you don't like the look of that against your dark color, take your marker. There you, go. you take your marker and just go a little bit on the edge. And then you don't see that light anymore. I, I might even do the same thing just down here a little bit. Okay, so that makes it better, right? A little bit on top, too. Take the brush end, and you're good to go. Hides it. All right. Uh, yes, Wendy, I will um, move this to YouTube when we're all done with Facebook here. So sometimes a little easier to see there. And also, there's some people that watch on YouTube that are not on Facebook. So um, they look forward to that as well. All right, so we're going to then glue this part, the inside, to, to that. So it's going to be like this. I'll open it up, and we're going to glue that right down to there. both sides so until you actually do it it's hard to get the full concept all right so then our pieces like this the left short flap is going to be folded in and this part is going to that's the back remember so that's the full size card in the back right, so that's the, the concept there now if I wanted my sentiment here I can't stamp it right on the Razzleberry, of course, right? So we are going to stamp it on a white circle, and we're going to slip it in the back there. So I like to first stamp and then punch, because a lot easier to line up the punch rather than to make sure you get your stamp just right. All right, see, for some reason, I'm leaning a little too heavy on the other side. Let me push some of that off. Or sometimes, if you accidentally slide your stamp, you kind of scoop up extra ink sometimes. Okay, stop leaning. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm just going to a little stamp. Oh, see, flip it over. Okay, much better. And see, now I can center it nice and easy. Okay, so wishing you a speedy recover. One thing I do sometimes when I make a mistake, I will purposely make it extra messy so I can recognize easily. Okay, yeah, that's the, that's the bad side. That's the better side. And sometimes it's just off a little bit and you don't want to use it so you flip it over and then sometimes it's hard to tell which one you really want it. All right, so now here's a little something you have to think about. We are going to be actually putting this on the back here so that it shows through, right? Now here's what you have you should really think about. When this is in the back, See if I can get this on the camera. You don't want this back piece, that little flap, to get caught on there as it's sliding over. Sometimes it might slip up a little bit. So there are two things that you can do. One is, I've seen some people put just a little bit of tape here. So it kind of softens the edge and um, the tape is thin enough so that the flap is not going to grab it and it's thinner than the cardstock so it creates like a little ease into there so that's one way to do it the other thing to do which is what i 
been doing, and I saw, um, is when this circle goes behind there, if you overlap it to that flap, okay, we're not going to glue it on to there because the glue is going to be in the back, right? And it's going to be glued to the back flap. If you overlap that there, then this flap is going to stay in front of that circle and not get caught as you open the card. Is that making sense? So if we make sure that the circle overlaps this, then we're good to go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put a little glue on the back and then line it up and then close the card right onto it. Now this doesn't need tons of glue there, but so I'm going to make sure I overlap. I'm sorry, I'm going off the camera again. I'm going to overlap, overlap that a little bit. I'm going to make sure I'm good in the front and it's overlapping a little. Did I choose the right size here? <laughs> Let me double check that. Yeah, I did. Okay. Okay, so wishing you a speedy recovery. And I didn't leave too much room for for margin here, so it might be a little off in the front. I am going to just make sure I'm overlapping there. Of course, I moved it again. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, it's not going to be terribly centered, so maybe that's something to think about. Keep a little bit to the right, slightly to the right, so that you have a little more wiggle room. Actually, I've done this before with a sentiment. I didn't, I mean, with a an image, I didn't do it with a sentiment, so I didn't think about that. So you're learning along with me. Make sure I'm good. All right, it's all good. I'm just going to hold it down, and then we're going to close the back onto it so that it gets all adhered. Put this glue, give it a little time to dry. All right, so now this flap is not going to get caught on there because the edge of the flap is on the top, is over the circle a little bit. Does that make sense? So now when we open it, we can put our image in here. So I punched out on a little smaller punch. I punch out my flowers and we're going to put it right in there like that. Now I don't have to worry about it catching on anything because the mechanism of the card is such that as it comes around, this fold lifts the inside of the card away. So even if you had something die cut on here and raise a little bit, I've seen people do that as well, it's not going to get caught because it's going to leave this gap here. So let's just very quickly um, do a little coloring. I know you know how to color, but I don't know. Um, all right, well, I have a little um, cloudy day here. It's going to be cloudy all day in Maryland. Um, uh, I have fun events coming up at a local coffee shop in Maryland. If anybody's local, you're welcome to join. I'm going to be hosting Cards for Troops. Some of you know and have participated in making Cards for Troops that will get sent in care packages overseas. I give my cards, no, not just my cards, I give the cards that are made to an organization called United for the Troops. Um, look it up, they're a great organization. It was founded by a father of a of former students of mine at my elementary school that I used to teach at. And they just celebrated sell, sending their 30,000th care package to um, deployed servicemen and women overseas. 30,000. I forget when they actually started, but still, 30,000 is a great number. Um, they collect donations of supplies, you know, like um, toiletry items, some fun things like um, magazines, books, um, socks, t-shirts, snacks, you know, non-perishable things, um, just some great things. They also 
um, we put some cards together, some greeting cards all together in packages of maybe, you know, six to eight or so, mix and match some birthdays or thinking of you, thank yous, whatever. And then that way, you know, if they feel like sending a card home or a letter, they have something nice, nice to do it with. I'm going to just mix up some light and dark raspberry with my blends here. Um, so some people have come to my home and we've made cards. I keep them simple so we can make a lot. Bulk is my priority <laughs> so we can spread the wealth even more. And some people have asked how can they contribute. So when we make cards, one thing that we have to be careful of is it can't have anything shiny. Okay, nothing glittery or shiny on there. I guess for security reasons, that's just their rules. Um, notice these flowers over here are different. They look sort of daisy-like or sunflowery. I'm going to use Mango Melody for the centers and leave the others white. So nothing shiny on the cards. Um, blank inside, and um, I obviously send envelopes to go along with them. So some people are making cards already. If, I guess there are two ways we can do this. We can send them directly, or you can send them directly to United for the Troops, or if you want, you can just send them to me, and I will package them up, and I will... Um, then, you know, send them up. Like I pack them in cellar bags and, you know, tie them up and put a little note in there. Um, so if that, if you have some spare cards and you want to do that, then uh, feel free. Certainly, you know, email me. I'll give you my address and you can send them and then we'll just mix and match them in with the cards that we make here. So coffee shop, I'm going to be there every third Friday. So that means I'm not going to be doing the Facebook Live on 10 o'clock on Friday mornings every third Friday, but we will have a different time. Okay, so don't worry, I won't forget about you, <laughs> but just worked out that way. Coffee shop caters to community groups. They um, There's also a college nearby. They have a study hall, study hall hours for the college kids. Um, a lot of the college kids, you know, work there and help run the place. So it's very community-minded kind of a, a place. And so for nonprofit events... We can use the, the meeting room for free. We have a lot of AV equipment, and the place is called Oka Mocha, O-C-A-M-O-C-H-A. -A, and they have great coffee and breakfast sandwiches. And I'm happy, to that they've accepted us to work there. So every third Friday, 10 o'clock, except this Friday will be, um, I mean, the, this month, the 21st, is going to be 1030 because they already had something booked. All right, so here we go. We are going to open up the card, and up goes the flowers. Wishing you a speedy recovery and sending you flowers. So this is where I'm going to put a piece of tear and tape down here to help hold it closed. Um, okay, Julie, um, for the troops, I send regular envelopes and, um, just to keep expenses a little lower, I get them in bulk, the envelopes I get at Staples or I send away to some places that sell the envelopes in bulk because I need a lot of them. And, um, Stampin' Up! envelopes are fabulous and great, um, nice quality, but for this, I need to keep the price down a little. So, um, all right, so we're going to close that up. So this grabs here. All right, and I see I, I didn't quite do that right there. But anyway, we get the idea. And it's a little sticky there. So I'm going to take my embossing buddy that comes with the um, embossing materials that you can get from the catalog. And then that little powder that's in there kind of takes the sticky away. So, like I said, if I wasn't talking all so much, I would have paid more attention to that, perhaps. All right, so then let's just decorate the front a little bit. 
I thought to put a little teacup. My friend loves tea, drinks tea. I'm going to put little flowers in the background. I'm going to stamp that with evening evergreen and just leave it. I'm not going to obviously color it in. A lot of it is colored in already. Um, maybe I'll add a little bit. No, I'm just going to keep it line art because this is like that too. It has a shading on there already. And so let me get my evergreen. Ooh, where are you? There it is. And I cut this out. I stamped it and I cut it out because I want that raised because I want it to be in front of the vase of flowers. I test it on my scrap paper first. There you go. Looks good. I'm going to miss this color. Oh. Who's going to miss Evening Evergreen? It's our, like my friend said before, it's really our only true dark green. We have Shaded Spruce, which is obviously more blue-green, and Peacock, I love, is coming back. But sometimes you just want plain old dark green, like a forest green. We used to have Handsome Hunter a long time ago. Um, okay, so now this is something I was thinking about also. I cut out the cup, but now... I was thinking I don't have to cut out inside there because it's going to overlap the white. And it's okay if I put it this way. But if I put it this way, it's not going to look right because we should be able to see through that handle, right? And then see that. So I have two options. I can either just move it over a little bit or I can take my, my scissors and cut out that little inside part there. So just for now, I think I'll just move it over a little bit <laughs> and leave it at that. All right, so we're going to put that up on dimensionals. One, two, three should do it. And hopefully have a nice card for her. Okay, because if I had that over there and I couldn't see through that handle to the vase behind it, that would have bothered me. So let's glue that down on, onto So Saffron. I figured that worked nice with the Razzleberry. And there we go. I'll put that on there now. Um, I don't often like to keep this really plain looking. Sometimes little speckles all around are kind of nice to do a little something all around. So I might end up doing that. I, um, so I'm not going to totally put this on yet because I like to take things that maybe from a, a something that has sand on it or sometimes in the flower sets you have things that have little splatters or, or speckles on it. So I might just do that and go around and put something on there and I just said oh I know what I can do um oh I don't have it at hand here okay never mind I'll show it to you later I'll post it if you make these cards then feel free to post it right here in the Facebook page um either under the video or I'll put a separate page where I'm posting the pictures and I'll invite you to share what you do with that. So that will go on there. We'll open it up. Wishing you a speedy recovery and out pops the flowers. Cute, right? And there's plenty of room for you to write here. So let me just show you my others as a reminder of different ways you can do this. Okay, here's the bunny. And I put the DSP circle in there the same way I did the white here with the sentiment. Let me let you peek inside there, see? So that's just there, but like that. And um, you got that there. So that's all white. You can decorate it how you like that way. And then the one with the DSP in the front. I just love this um, DSP. This set is... Um, let me get that over here. It's a bundle that is carrying over to the new catalog. It is Petal Park. It has 
the two-step stamping techniques. So you have your outline, and then you can fill in with color. Okay, so this is all. Let me just show you. This is um, like the flowers, just three of them are all together. And then that lines up with the punch. So you can punch out the three flowers and stamp them all at the same time. Same thing with the leaves. You have the detail and you have the fill-in. And then you have some individual ones as well. So um, actually I could probably take, say like those little flowers and go all around. <gasps> yep, I'll do that. Okay, if you've got a minute, you can watch me do that. So Petal Park is continuing over. Usually um, it's not as a bundle. When the first comes out, the products get bundled. The, when they get carried over to another catalog, you can buy them separately. You no longer get the 10% discount on the bundle. However, um, at least they're still coming back. The DSP is the 6x6. Six six. You can still get it now until May 1st. I just love the blues and I love the flowers on here. So pretty. Some sorbet, some petal pink. I just love that night and navy and balmy blue. And then some of that petal pink in there. Look how pretty that is. That's how the stamps would, would look. Yeah, with the filling in there. All right, so this you can still get. The DSP never carries over. So any of the DSP in the catalog, you can do that. Um, you can order now because it's not going to be coming back. Um, and speaking of DSP, when the new catalog comes out, I'm going to be doing a product share again. So... I'll be doing uh, the paper share. I'll be choosing some of the new pretty papers that actually I'm, I'm basing it on what I could pre-order. That way I can get that started and out to you. We can get it started pretty quickly. Um, okay, yeah, I think that'll look nice. Tone on tone. I'm just going to make sure because there's different layers in here, especially over here, there's a a, a ridge here. I'm going to make sure that I don't stamp across that because it won't meet up easily. So I'll just do some random. And this is going to cover up anyway. Alright, so well, that's covering up. Get a little off the side there, a little bit down here. A little bit here now. I don't want to go on to there, so I'm going to get some scrap paper. And I'm just going to slide it in there. So I can go off and I'm not going to ruin my other image. Right I think I want some down here. Little tiny hint of one coming in off the side. And let me get a little bit over here. All right, I think that'll do. That's pretty, right? Now I think it needs a little something up there. I'll find some embellishments to put on there. And then it'll be done. Probably three dots somehow. Okay, either three or maybe three in a row. I'll work it out. I'll find something I like and play around with that. Okay, so any any other questions? Let me read Julie's, Julie's comment. I learned to stamp the flower and stamp without catching my hand in the punch. Ah, uh, yeah, fussy cut the flowers. Oh, okay. Well, a couple of things. When you are stamping something that's lined up with your punch, there are a few things that you can do with it. And I showed one with the fish on my live two weeks ago. Um... And it used the Stamparatus, so if you have the Stamparatus, you can try that. So look back on the um, from two weeks ago. That would have been the 26th, maybe, of March. Um, I showed one way of doing that to, to get them all nice and straight. Um, also, start with a bigger piece of paper, stamp, and then go from there so you have room to hold it, right? If you... Do have a smaller piece of paper. The trick is to let me get one. I'll show you how it goes. The trick would be to um, if you don't have room to hold it, 
Let me cut that down. I'll show you exactly what I mean. And here's a sticky note. And this is going to be like your handle. All right, so if you have your flowers stamped there, I'll show you really quick. Glad you asked. I, mean, I hope I'm answering your question anyway. Um, where's my other? Okay, here we go. My bigger blocks. And if I'm not answering your question, maybe I'm answering something that could have been your question in the future. <laughs> something new to learn. All right, so here's our... Oh, okay, so a good way to do is to think about how it's lined up. And right, so if I want to come in this way, then I want to punch my flowers in that direction, at least close enough because the bigger flower is over on the right here. So I'm going to do that. Actually, the paper's a little longer the other way, so I'll just orient this differently. All right, so there we go. Okay, and then I can fill in. I'll fill in with the same color, but just stamp off. So some of you who are unfamiliar with that, you ink up, and if I stamp that full strength, that could be fine, but we're not gonna see as much contrast, so stamp some of the ink off, and then just line that up over. And now it looks like a, a totally different tone of ink. All right, another shade there. And then you can line that up in your punch until the images match. And then punch away. Oh yeah, sometimes if you're not careful, you can pinch your hands in there. Is that what you were saying? Okay. So give it a good, good starting, starting, uh, uh, get a good head start on it is what I'm trying to say. And then you have your flowers there. And so that's what I did on the inside of, of this card. I punched out some of the flowers. I left them just the outline because these I filled in. So I figured it was nice contrast. And then in here, I know it's dark to write, but I'm thinking to write with a nice silver gel pen. It would look pretty. Okay. So there you go. I hope you have fun with that. I hope you give it a give it a whirl. Make sure you left a comment. Um, say hello or um, if you'd like to tell where you're from. That's always fun to see how far we're we're sharing our stamping fun with. And um, stay in touch. If you're not on my mailing list, then you might want to go to my blog and sign up for that. You get a free tutorial when you do for a fun twisted easel card. And um, it should be all good. I'm just going to turn my camera around again and say a final goodbye. Oh. oh, here we go. Okay, here we are. Okay, so, um, oh, I didn't show you the host code. <laughs> okay, um, you can always find the host code. I'll just flip it again. Here we go. You can always find the host code on my blog if you are ordering. If your order is under $150, it's helpful for me if you use the, the host code, okay? If you um, if your order is $150 or more, do not use the host code because at that level, with a $150 order or more, you yourself will qualify for host rewards starting at 10%. So you have $150 you can get $15 worth of product, anything from the current catalogs, okay, or the retiring list or whatever is available or online, okay, whatever current products are available. Um, so think about that. I, I I don't like seeing, I feel sad when I see somebody putting in, say, like a $145 order, and they were just $5 away from getting a $15 reward. So think about that. If you're close, bump it up a little bit. I'm, I'm not... I'm telling you this, you know, for my sales, I'm, I, I just like to not have you miss out on something that you, that you could have. All right. So, um, just kind of keep that in mind. I'll flip around again one more time. There you go. 
and I wish you all a nice Easter or Passover or whatever your happy spring, whatever you're celebrating. Nice to see the flowers blooming and um, oh, oh, the last week's raffle. That's right. Okay, last week's raffle. Um, so I wasn't able to get that, get all those names typed onto my wheel. I know it's fun to watch that, but it just didn't work out this week. So, um, I, um, well, I mean, it's a time to show you today, but yeah. Oh, you like seeing the wheel. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'll do it for this time. I promise. I promise. So, um, my raffle winner for last week was Fonda, Fonda Rush. And I said I was giving away. Um, we talked about the silicone mat, so I have a silicone mat to give away to Fonda. If Fonda, if, if you already have one or you don't need this, then I will, um, be in contact with me and, and we'll negotiate a different prize for you. Okay. Um, and so yeah, Fonda, email me your address and phone number and we can be in touch all righty so after the live i'll go through i'll write down anybody who left a comment and and i'll try to spin the wheel a little later or maybe tomorrow morning okay we've got the grandkids today <laughs> all right guys so happy easter happy spring glad that you were able to join on today and um we'll see you next time all right so we'll see you next friday but not the 21st at this time i'll arrange a different time to do the coffee and a card all right so Last sip of coffee with you and have a great day. All right. Bye, everyone.